Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is Logic 301, and we are in month number three, looking at piano arithmetic. So, today we're going to be proving that zero is a natural number. Now, the first of Piano's postulates is fairly simple. This is just the claim that zero is a natural number. With the axioms that we have so far, we should be able to prove this fairly easily. If you want to try it out on your own, pause the video here. This is a fairly easy proof, so it's a good chance to dust off your formal logic skills. We are going to be getting into much more complicated proofs to prove the rest of the Piano postulates in the videos to come. The statement we're going to be trying to prove is Simple. Zero is a natural number. It's important to note before we dig into this that the piano postulates are often assumed and mathematics is built up from them. In this case, we are not going to be assuming the piano postulates. We are going to be taking our axioms of set theory that we have so far, as well as the ways that we've defined zero, successorship, and the natural numbers in terms of set theory, and showing that you don't need to assume the piano postulates, but rather you can actually prove them, build them all the way up from set theory. So, if you ever were a child in elementary or middle school and were asking, but why is zero a natural number? And we're just given the answer, well, we assume that it is, or it's just done that by stipulation. Today, you're going to be able to prove why. Let's take a look. So we're going to start with our conclusion. Our conclusion is that zero is a member of N, the set of all natural numbers. Our first premise is simply going to be the definition of a natural number. So for all classes A, A is a member of the set of all natural numbers, is identical to, for all B, if B is an inductive set, that implies that A is a member of B. In other words, natural numbers are the set of numbers that are members of all inductive classes. Next, we are going to universally instantiate zero concept that we want to prove is a natural number into this first premise and say that zero is a member of the set of all natural numbers is identical to for all classes B. If B is inductive, it implies that zero is a member of B. Next, we're going to set up an indirect proof and assume the negation of the second half of premise two. It's not the case that for all classes B, B is an Inductive set implies that zero is a member of B. And if you remember the definition of an inductive set, you should see, as well as the definition of zero, you should see how we're fairly easily going to finish this up. Let's take a look. So first off, we'll do a change of quantifier. We'll move that negation inside and get there exists a B instead of for all B. Then we will existentially instantiate B as X. We'll do implication to change our implication into a disjunction, and then use de Morgan's law to distribute our negation across changing our disjunction to a conjunction. Then we're going to simplify our conjunction out the two pieces of it into it's not the case that zero is a member of x, and it's not the case that it's not the case that x is inductive, which by double negation is simply x is inductive. If we remember our definition of an inductive set, the null set is a member of x and for all b, b is a member of x implies the successor of b is a member of x. We have done our inductive set definition and gone ahead and instantiated x for the inductive set. So we skipped a step or two here, um, but it should be fairly obvious what's going on. Then we're going to go ahead and simplify that out. We don't need the long complicated second half about successorship. All we need is that first half that the null set is a member of x, i.e. the null set is a member of all inductive sets. And then we can show that the null set is the same as zero, because that's how we defined zero earlier, which means that zero is a member of x, because the null set is a member of x, and the null set is identical to zero. This means that we have a contradiction. Zero is a member of x, and zero is not a member of x by premise 8, premise 13 in conjunction. With this uh, Contradiction, we're able to pull out of our indirect proof and show that for all b, if b is inductive, it implies that 0 is a member of b by 3 through 14 inductive proof, or indirect proof, rather. Um, and finally, therefore, we have by premise 2, premise 15, identity, 0 is a member of the set of all natural numbers. In other words, 0 is a natural 
number. That's the first of our piano postulates. We have four more to go. A couple of them will be, most of them will be more complicated than this, but three of them will be not too hard to do. The last one, it's going to be a challenge, but we will make it through. So, up next, we're going to be doing a proof that numbers follow numbers. Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.